Well, here to discuss the impact of the book and the film are the author Martel Maxwell, who joins us from Dundee, and Natalie Collins, who set up her own campaign against the Fifty Shades series. Natalie Collins, first of all, um, you heard E.R. James there say it's consensual sex. You know, whatever the nature of the sex is, it's consensual. So essentially what you're saying is you want to hamper freedom of expression. Absolutely not. Um, first of all, we are not anti-sex and we're not anti-BDSM. We're pro-good sex and we're pro-safe consensual BDSM. And the clip we saw there of E.L. James describing what she's depicted in the books as safe and consensual and inaccurate and those within the BDSM community are very supportive of the campaign mm. that we're doing and saying that they um, are appalled at the way that she misrepresents BDSM in the books as well. So you've got lots of thumbed books here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I did was I folded down the page every time I came across abuse in the books and it was you know I didn't go for more than a couple of pages without seeing abusive behaviours. Um, Martel Maxwell um, you're all in favour of uh, the freedom of expression the film but what do you say to the point that it may be consensual sex but actually this is an abusive relationship because there is a control element in it? There is a control element in it, but I, I read the book and, um, you know, was educated in a way because it was so out with the realms of what I've experienced, the S&M world. And yes, it's controlling, but it is consensual. Now, anyone who's experienced domestic abuse knows that there's no contract signed and there is no consent. And also, this book is very extreme. I, I don't know if anyone who has been in a situation then? where they've... Is it cartoonish? Do you Perhaps think? it is a bit cartoonish. Perhaps it is a bit cartoonish. You have a billionaire um, who is asking a woman to sign a contract and he won't do anything to her that she doesn't agree to. It doesn't happen in the real world. Therefore, I fail to see where the danger is because it's not as if women are going to go down this route or indeed men could follow it. I think um, one of the concerns we've had is that lots of women have contacted our campaign having approached the books as, oh, this is a bit of se kinky sex, this will be interesting. And actually what they've found is it's mirrored their experiences and the trauma of their relationships with an ex-partner who's been abusive. And what um, one woman said to me the other day, she said that, um, isn't it wonderful that my, my abuse and my trauma has been glamorised and a lot of money's been made out of it. And so women are approaching this thinking this is something interesting. And what it's doing is actually glamorising something that's been very traumatic for them. But hang on, but it's different to say that women recognise what's happened to them by reading the book than to saying that actually the book then encourages that behaviour and there is a linkage. I mean, that would be like saying every time you see a murder on television, it encourages people to go and murder. I mean, it's incredibly simplistic, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, we're not, we're not saying that there's a direct correlation between somebody reading this and experiencing abuse, but um, lots of young people are reading these books, lots of young women, and 72% of girls within the UK will experience emotional abuse mm. from a boyfriend by the age of 16. And if you have a young but then, woman but then reading you this... Could argue you could argue, Natalie, that 81% of boys aged 14 to 16 are said to look at hardcore porn. Now, that does normalise um, something that's very, very dangerous, whereas this, E.L. James's work, is the work of one woman's head. But, it's fiction. Hang on. That's and very where interesting. do we draw the line if we say that this can't be seen? Th th that is interesting what you're saying, though, because essentially you're saying that uh, boys watching hardcore porn reenact, but actually reading this book wouldn't encourage you to reenact. Well, what's the difference? Well, I personally don't think it would encourage you to, to reenact. It's a, it's a novel, it's fiction, hundreds of pages, whereas hardcore porn mm -hmm. is so instant, and it's real people. As I say, this is just, novels are full of despicable characters. You don't have to like the novel. You'll get, I know as a novelist, you get one star, you get five star. It divides people, but that's no reason to boycott it, because really, you want to give women the choice. That's what this is all about. You want to empower women. We're both on the same side here, and saying, don't yes. go and see this film is doing the opposite of empowering them. I think it's a case of saying, how does this this film, how do these books, what, this brand, this social phenomena that is Fifty Shades, it's not just a film, it's not just a book, it's a clothing line, it's a sex toy line, there's lots and lots of aspects to what this has become. And what it does is it normalises very abusive behaviour, it normalises um, coercive behaviour, it normalises stalking throughout the books. He's, his stalking is seen as a character quirk. And how does that impact young women? How does that impact women who are starting relationships and thinking this is normal? But, you, but it, 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 you, but it is you a phenomenon, think, 90 million. And you're not suggesting that, you know, that all, uh, all these readers are going to experience these feelings? No, to ab uh, totally not. It's not about saying that there's a direct correlation between experiencing it and um, reading it. It's about saying what does that do when it normalises con uh, non-consensual um, behaviour, when it normalises somebody being manipulated and coerced. So you expect to make a lot of money out of this movie? 
Um, I expect there's going to be a lot of money being made, and I no, hope that it's coming to you. No, not to me. I don't. I don't run a service. What I hope is that um, people will donate to services where women are in need. And will you pick it on, th on St Valentine's Day? Will I? Pick it? Yes, we're hoping to. If we get enough interest, when we'll hopefully um, be picketing. Okay, on, um, thank the you. Premier. Thank you both very much indeed.